Okay, so we've been talking about measurements. Now we need to talk about measurement uncertainty. It's really important to kind of get an idea of how specific we can be, whether we're in lab or whether we are um, measuring something for work or for the house. You want to know how precise or how accurate you are. So for this unit, we're going to talk about converting units from regular notation to scientific notation. You really need to have your calculator for this. You have got to be able to do this and practice on the same device you are going to use on your exam. We're going to talk about performing calculations to the correct number of sig figs. Again, this is important for lab. Guys, I can tell you, sig figs usually account for about a letter grade. Um, and you don't want to risk making silly mistakes for th things like that. Um, and then finally we're going to talk about accuracy and precision. Okay, so when we're talking about measurement uncertainty, one way to eliminate that is to use scientific notation. And that is because it allows us to use the correct number of sig figs. When we talk about sig figs, we have specific rules that are going to help us assign those. You really um, work through those the first week of lab as well. Um, there's a good lab for that. We also talk about how to do calculations with significant figures. And then we're going to go ahead and define accuracy, precision, and error. Now, when we talk about why we need to know about uncertainty, think about um, how you want to hand, well, let's, let's do ages first. If I were to ask you your age, you might say, I'm 27 or I'm 42. You tend to not get too specific. Um, when, we, when I ask my toddler how old she is, she might say, she's two and a half. And that half is very important to her because it's a big deal. It's a large portion of that. You talk about a baby, you might report it in months. Oh, she's two months old, two and a half months old. Um, you can be more uh, certain or precise with that. Now, say you wanted to, say your fridge died and you needed a replacement. Um, you might take a tape measure and measure and be like, oh, it's about 30 inches. I have no idea how large a standard fridge is, but something like that. You go to the store and you're like, oh, well, should I look for something that's between 25 and 35? Probably not. It would really stink if you spent a couple thousand dollars on a fridge, come home, and it doesn't fit. You want to know how accurate you are. You might also think about things like the weatherman. The weatherman could say something like, oh, there's a 73% chance of rain tomorrow, plus or minus 25%, because they don't have to be very correct ever. Meanwhile, a doctor might want to deliver 1.2 milligrams of, an, of a drug to a patient, plus or minus 0 0.01, because maybe here that accuracy is... Um, much more important. So anyway, when we're talking about numbers, we want to know how correct we are. And one way to do that is with significant figures. When we say significant figures, we mean all known numbers and one uncertain. Uh, this is from a burette. Burettes have the smaller numbers up at the top and they get larger as you work down. So for example, this line right here is 19.0. This is 20.0 milliliters and so on. 19.1, 19.2, 19.3. You guys get the idea. In lab, when you are reading a volume, you want to do it from the bottom of the meniscus, which seems to be right there. Now, it's really, there's a shadow here, and it'd be really easy to say, oh, it's right on that 20.0. But we know it's 20.0. We can see that. 
we also see this little shadow right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Which means we know it's between 20.0 and 20.1. And so we should be able to say all of the known numbers, which is the 20.0 plus this unknown area in here, which I'm just going to say halfway. So you need to have all known numbers and this one uncertain digit. And this would have four sig figs. For a burette, you need to read to two decimal places. There's a couple of labs this semester with burettes, and I can tell you now, a lot of people are going to get mistakes and points taken off because they will not read to the right number of sig figs. For significant figures, there are four to five rules. The first is all non-zero numbers are significant. 12.4 is three sig figs. Basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of these numbers are significant no matter what. 8.9 has two, four has one significant figure. Zeros sandwiched between two non-zero numbers are significant. So 30.0 has three sig figs, 19.09 has four. We're not to the leading zeros yet, but these two zeros that are sandwiched are significant. So these are significant numbers. Trailing zeros are only significant if there is a period. 100 has one sig fig. This decimal after the 100 makes all of those trailing zeros significant. So this has three. Trailing zeros and a number with a decimal are significant, so this has four. Leading zeros are zeros that are before a non-zero number in a number that is less than one. Um, these are never significant. They are placeholders. 0 0.02 has one sig fig. 0 0.89 has two. Leading zeros are not significant. Sandwiched zeros are, so this has four sig figs. <coughs> <coughs> so how many significant figures are in these numbers? In the number one, one, ten, no decimal, so one, 100, 1, 1,000, no decimal, 1. As soon as you add that decimal, you can see it's going to count. And so this now has four significant figures. By the way, guys, I hope you guys are still pausing and practicing on your own before you listen to my answers to the practice problems. Zero has... Well, actually, that's kind of a tricky question, isn't it? I wouldn't do that to you on the test. But, looks like one sig fig to me. 0 0.1, this is a leading zero, so one sig fig. Leading zeros never count, so it's only the one that does. One zero, trailing zeros count, and a number with a decimal, so this is two. Now, there are times when, in addition to wanting to report the accurate number, we may be simple. Exact numbers are numbers that are infinitely correct. So say you have a pack of five pencils. There are exactly five pencils there. Now, if we wanted to, we could write 5.0000000 and keep going like this, to say that's how many pencils we have, or we could say this is an exact number, there's infinite sig figs, and we can just use other numbers to talk about those. Here, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. There is exactly 100 centimeters on a meter stick, so this contains an infinite number of sig figs. And we could have said one meter or 1.0000 
like this meter is equal to 100 points like this. But guys, this is such a waste of time. And so we're going to use exact numbers or um, something like that to really uh, abbreviate. Now the way for me to determine if it's an exact number and therefore sig figs don't really apply is by looking at the units meter centimeter that is part of the same system of measurement and therefore it is going to be an exact conversion same thing here 12 inches and and one foot you guys are in America hopefully you know there's 12 inches on a ruler and so this is a conversion from one unit to another within the same system and therefore um, exact. Now in calculations if you are going to multiply and divide your answer needs to have the same number of sig figs as the number with the fewest, okay? The reason for that is you can't say, um, you can't add numbers for anything. You just need to use the uh, least specific as your guide. When you are adding and subtracting, you should have the same number of decimal spaces as the number with the fewest. Guys, I got to tell you, um, the sample questions that I included, the test questions from previous semesters, um, have some great challenge questions for you. People always think my answer key has a mistake. It doesn't. Really work through those sample questions and if you can get those correct, hopefully you'll do really well on the exam. So answer the following to the correct number of <coughs> sig figs. 12.4 times 0.2 when you enter this in the calculator, you end up getting, um, all right, I need to pause. Where? Okay, guys, um, hopefully you have paused and tried these so that we can um, work through them together. If you do that, hopefully you have um, uh, 12.4 times 0.2, you end up getting something like 2.48 from the calculator. Now, 12.4, let's go with purple, has three significant figures. This guy has one. And so when you go to round this, you want to round to one significant figure. So we're going to round to this space. The 4 means this rounds down, so you end up getting a 2. If you have a, this question, oops, 31.4 plus 9.17. Can make that a little bit more even. Oops, that's not a five. You end up getting 40.57. Now, this space doesn't have a spot here, and so we should be able to round that to this one space. The seven makes it come up, so you get 40.6. 100 times 14 in your calculator you get 1400. We want one significant figure so it's a thousand. 100 divided by 17 the calculator gives you some monstrosity like 5.882325 blah blah blah. 17 has two sig figs 100 has one. So we are going to round this to this spot. Eight makes it come up, so you have a six. If it is 0.49, you round down. 0 0.50, you round up. Another way to account for measurement uncertainty 
is to use scientific notation. It's also really helpful when we're dealing with large or small numbers because it allows us to, instead of writing, say, a million, one, two, three, four, five, six, we could just say 10 to the sixth. Generally, scientific notation is going to contain a coefficient. This coefficient has one number to the left of a decimal. And then you have a power of 10. All numbers are in the coefficient are significant. So for example, 1.42 times 10 to the 2 meters, it's the same as saying 142 meters. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second is the same as saying 30 million meters per second. It's just that here we can distinguish that there's two sig figs. Here we have no idea. It only looks like one. This, 5.1 times 10 to the minus 4 grams, is the same as 0 0.00051 grams. And we can distinguish the number of sig figs. So again, pause and try to convert the following to scientific notation. You should check with your calculator, guys. Um, so for me, I know that the decimal that I'm going to assume is here needs to move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So this should be 6.7. If I need three significant figures, I'm going to add a zero times 10, what do we say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces. This is a very small number, so it's going to be a negative exponent. 1, 2, 3, 4 gives us one number to the left of a decimal. 1.2, the third sig fig is going to be here. 5 makes it round up, so it's 1.24 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces, but it's a small number, so it's negative 4. Um, this would be 6.0. This number is going to make that round to a 1 times 10 to the negative 1. It moved over one spot. This is 3.0, uh, excuse me, 3.33 times 10. The decimal is already in the right spot, so it didn't move. The fact that it moved zero spaces means it's going to be 10 to the zero. And in your calculator, 3 times, 3.33 times 10 to the zero gives you 3.33. Make sure you are comfortable with scientific notation before you get um, to the exam. Hopefully lab will help you with that, but I want you to have the opportunity to, um, to really do well. The last thing we need to talk about is accuracy, precision, and error. Accuracy is how close to the true value you are. If we were talking about a bullseye, in general that means it's going to be close to the middle. Precision means you have measurements that are very close to one another. Um, so for example, um, a couple years ago, uh, my dad was trying to lose weight. So he set the scale um, in their bathroom to about five to seven pounds heavier than true. So you can imagine my mom uh, the following morning got on... Um, <laughs> multiple times trying to determine uh, if that weight was accurate. And what was happening is she was getting numbers that were something like this, very close together, but definitely not um, accurate because of the uh, that setting that my dad did. Um, so anyway, accuracy and precision may overlap. If they did, it would be very close measurements together in the middle like that. Um, or they may be accurate but not precise, precise but not accurate, or both. In addition, we can talk about the error. 
error is the difference between the true value and the measured value. Um, you could have scales that read too high. The gas gauge might not be calibrated. One of the cars I had in high school would run out at half a tank. And so, um, yeah, that was frustrating. Um, the idea being the fact that this wasn't calibrated caused an error in reading. You could also have something simple. <coughs> in lab, you could measure out the amount of water or acid you need in a graduated cylinder. And then when you're delivering it to your beaker, you might spill it. That would be a source of error. And one of the things you're going to do this semester is learn to really evaluate where that error comes from. More important, we want to consider the percent error. You know, we talk about the age of a fossil, an error of, say, I don't know, 50 years might not matter. On the other hand, um, you try to distinguish the age of your grandma, 50 years might be a big deal to her. Um, so you want to talk about the percent error. The way we do that is you ha the percent error is the accepted value minus the measured value over the accepted times 100. You could also say theoretical and experimental. It is the theoretical value minus what you experimentally get in lab over what you should have gotten theoretically times 100. Notice that this is an absolute value. We don't care if it's too high or too low, only how far off it is. So if we calculated a 14.5 kilogram child is weighed holding a toy, causing her weight to be read as 16.9. Theoretically, again, pause and please work through these. Sorry. Um, theoretically, we should have had a 14.5 reading. So if we have theoretical minus experimental over theoretical times 100, we can say this 14.5 minus 16.9 over 14.5 times 100. In your calculator, um, I tend to stick anything subtracting and add, adding into parentheses just to make sure, but it's up to you. Um, it's however you learned in math and however you are comfortable with your calculator. So you end up getting something like 16.5517. Sig figs, this guy has 3, this guy has 3. 100 just changes it to a percent so it doesn't matter. So we're going to round this to 16.6%. So it's 16.6% error. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what this will look like. Um, that concludes this section.